Hello, everybody, and welcome to Jupiter at Night. Good evening. My name is Chris. Good evening. My name is Jeremy. <laughs> Jupiter at Night is no, our that's latest. Cheesy, show. But I like it. I know. I thought so. <laughs> I also thought in tonight's news, uh, it's our it's our latest show that is going to be a nightly show Monday through Thursday at JupiterBroadcasting.com. Slash. And today live. is June twenty eighth. Yeah. This is Jupiter at Night. Dun dun dun. <laughs> uh, Jupiter at Night's really going to cover the most interesting stories of the day. We're sort of an idea. The idea is you can finish off your evening watching us. I don't know if I'd make the claim interesting. Well, okay. Hand picked. Yes. Yeah. Crowdsourced. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, of course, if uh, you if you just are not one of those late night people, while well, we are airing live, you could always catch the show in the mornings. We'll release over at JupiterBroadcasting on our RSS feeds. Very good. Good reminder. I had mentioned before the show that uh, I wanted to make a disclaimer that the RSS feeds for Jupiter at Night are live now. And if you think you might be interested in the show. I encourage you to go subscribe now because once the show is actually officially launching Monday through Thursday, we won't be putting it out in the main video feed because we don't want to slam people. Because, yeah, four we, days a week. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it, it probably won't often be featured up in that main slider on our Jupiter Broadcast. Unless we do a show that's just so ground shatteringly yeah. awesome. Yeah. So, you know, once a week. All right. Well, I guess, should we stop talking about all the homework stuff and get yeah. into the show? I, I wanted to cover a fun story today. I had the day off and from you work. Failed. <laughs> no, it's, no. <laughs> you don't know. You haven't heard the story. Yet. Oh, okay. I took the day off. I haven't off. read the show notes either, right? I didn't put it in the show notes. I was oh. being sneaky, sneaky, and I thought I'd barbecue a little bit. So I barbecued up some nice steaks and everything like that. And I got the barbecue going really, really hot. Right. I mean, I just loaded up with coals because I, one of the things is you know I was doing New York steaks and you want to cook those things fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so they stay nice and juicy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, afterwards, the barbecue still had a good amount. I mean, I had clamped it all down, but the barbecue still had a good amount of heat. So we decided to throw on uh, some s'mores. Foil. Do a little barbecued s'mores, right? So we threw some, uh, we got some foil and we threw some uh, s'mores in there. And uh, I started, you know, I've done this before and it's generally been pretty successful. I uh, From the fact that you're only showing me foil, though, I, I have a sneaky suspicion how they turned out this time. <laughs> so, well, <laughs> so you can already see my, my son Dylan was watching nearby, skeptical he the entire time. He looked very skeptical, yeah. yeah. <laughs> skeptical Dylan was quite skeptical. Uh, he, was, uh, he was keeping watch and did not uh, approve of my maneuvers. I brought it in. I was worried about it burning. So I brought the s'mores in too early, and they weren't fully melted Oh. Yet. So my tip is, is I, I got it up to, I got it up to temperature, and I should have left it wrapped because... Yeah. We we left a couple in in the foil and they got all nice and melted. Oh, so just the heat that was already trapped in the foil. Yeah, their their heat inertia, if yeah. you will, carry them all of the way. Science. So I just thought, you know, because whenever I have a barbecue going, I look at that and I go, I do not want to waste those coals. I've got perfectly good Wait hot a coals. I just realized something. Mm. Cooking is science. It is. Why don't I cook all the time? That's I, that's what I like I about be it. discovering amazing yeah. things. That's why I watch Alton Brown's uh, Good Eats on the Food Network. It's science like. Food TV. Anyways, if you've got any tips for how you use residual barbecue heat after a nice <laughs> meal for a dessert, if you have any dessert barbecue tips, I'd love to know. Uh, tell us in the show notes, in the comments somewhere. I'd, I'd be curious to hear what people have out there. You know what I'd probably do? What? Uh, this is probably really creative and nobody's thought of this. I would just let it cool off. Oh. Yeah. But that's... then you're wasting all of that built... See, I made a man fire. <laughs> and I don't want to waste my man fire. You know what I mean? There's so much less man if it just goes away. Right. <laughs> well, so speaking of man fire, should we talk a little bit about Facebook? Because Facebook yeah. has put out some interesting stats Facebook today. is a man fire. It, Facebook is a huge man fire. Check this thing out. 16 billion minutes of usage a day. You know, I wrote out 16 billion in the show notes just to see how many zeros That's, that is. It's too many zeros. It's many, many it's zeros. It's a lot of zeros. Check this out. 400 million users. One million Photos every second. Oh my God, I thought you said minute earlier. Every second? <laughs> One million photos every second. Oh my God. <laughs> so many photos. Uh, check this out. To, to uh, handle this massive amount of traffic, they have 60,000 servers. I have no idea what that means, but you're a server guy, so is that Well, impressive? I used to manage 100 servers, and that felt like an awful lot. <laughs> it really did. So I, 60 <laughs> servers is just unbelievable. And You know what I want to point out, though? What? One million, what was it, one million photos a second? Yeah. Um, doesn't Facebook have the free privilege to use those for whatever they want? Yeah. Yeah. I know. Do you know how many photos that, how many photos have been how, posted while we're doing this show? How could they, but how could they ever possibly go through all those photos they could just facial recognition and like they do do some of that and then you just 
index them out and put a, a, a new iStock yeah. photo site uh, full of people faces. Joe, Joe in the chat room uh, has some suggestions as to what the content of those photos should be. Yeah, and I agree. I'll leave it to your imagination, yes. though. So uh, one kind of sideways, tangentially related story to Facebook is Firefox recently had a new beta, or actually, no, an actual, I think it was a new release that came out, a point update. There you go, Firefox. And it did like this plug-in isolation so that if Flash crashes or some other plug-in crash, it doesn't take down your whole browser. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, really yeah. cool. But I guess it ended up having issues with Flash and Farmville on Facebook. Oh, no. And there was like this internal discussion at Firefox about okay, how you know super critical it was they get this fixed, and they already rolled out a new fix. You know, uh, as critical as I am about how, how crazy, stupid Farmville is, you, did you know that it's got like a hundred times the users of World of Warcraft, the largest video game what? ever? Yeah. No. Yeah, like World of Warcraft boasts a, a, like a current BS. subscriber base around 10 million. Yeah. Farmville boasts about 100 million. <laughs> what? Yeah. No, dude. Well, they probably are counting the people that have gone, what the hell? Why'd somebody send me a pig? And then the, so they yeah. go to the app and then they click yeah, accept and they then are. it's just there. And you'd mentioned in this headline where they say it's like 16 billion hours of idle, or no, 16, 16 billion minutes, minutes, I think it usage. is. I closed it. because 16 billion minutes of use oh, per message day. Oh, per day total. But you said they're also counting people are just sitting with the page idle. Yeah, just idle time. So that sounds a little cheesy. Because really, me. if you think about it, every click is microseconds. That couldn't possibly add up to. Right. Yeah. Right. I yeah. agree with you. Now, our next story has more of a well, hmm, speaking of emerging photos, trends, maybe. Yeah, yeah. The flash in the flash and versus HTML5 video debate rages on, and now one of the biggest players has stepped in and thrown down their opinion. Previously, the largest player in this battle was probably Apple. Yeah. And now Apple has a um, a minion, an ally. <laughs> Apple has found an ally in the porn industry. <laughs> So this is hilarious. I'd be pissed about being well, yeah, called that. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Apple uh, has a very clean cut image. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so one of the big uh, gotcha. <laughs> one of the big porn video distributors out there called Digital Playground has announced that uh, they're really looking forward to transitioning off of Flash. Uh, their main reason for wanting to get rid of Flash did you did you catch why this was? No, why, why was that? Their main reason is because Flash is bad for battery life, and nobody nobody wants your battery to die while you're jerking your gherkin. <laughs> So they want to give it to the porn industry to be really big on batteries. <laughs> so they want <laughs> they want people to drop flash so that way they can use HTML5 because it uses mm -hmm. less power. I, I think this is hilarious. And of course, the immediate thing that this invoked uh -huh. was VHS versus Betamax. Well, and DVD, uh, Blu-ray versus HD DVD. Because which, by the, the way, porn got on the wrong side of it. I turns out. I I thought I thought because porn did choose HD DVD, I thought yeah. that was a big thing. But mm -hmm. now they're now they're throwing their porn weight behind HTML5. <laughs> so I think it, between porn and Apple, it's pretty much a done deal now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. because who doesn't want to watch porn on their iPad and iPhone, right? I wouldn't know. I don't own either. Our, all right. Our last story for tonight on Jupiter Night is <laughs> probably one of these stories that I would not have read today and come across if I hadn't had the day off. I don't generally <laughs> go too far out the tech and science spectrum. Right. Despite how... Scintillating the article might look. I just don't have the time. Right. You know. And the fact that it was published on what is this MSNBC? MS, well, it was on a lot of sites. Yeah. But I found it actually on MSNBC <laughs> because uh, along with the um, news story, one of the new things on Msnbc.com is a new website design they rolled out today. So I thought we'd be, f I thought we'd have some fun and we'd we'd take. Can a I look review at their, their website design real quick? Yeah, sure. I hate it. You don't like the new one? Nope. It's well, got this new bar at the bottom, which I don't think you can does. see on the screen that you've got uh -uh. right here. One thing it also does, though, here. if you'll notice, though, here's... here's oh, no. While you play with it, I'll tell people the big difference. Well, no, here, now you can switch to me, and I've oh, got all it. Right. See, it's right there. Yeah. So instead of having a top bar, there's a bottom bar with new stuff on it, and it's tabbed and stuff like that. But and what they also do now is instead of doing a big splash screen for an ad, that what they do is they have the ads in line to the text, and you, as you scroll through... You get prompted to show more text, and in between those spots, there'd be an ad. Now, mine happens mm -hmm. to be blank right now, but yeah. Mine is not. Yours is not. So this story, the, what we totally got distracted from, is actually a pretty <laughs> pretty interesting story. Ten alleged Russian secret agents have been arrested and op were operating in the United States. It's about time we crack up on those. Uh, right? Crack down. Those rescues those. are in and they're invading our, our United States. We got to crack down. We got to get rid of the Russians. They're invading our, our freedom. This was pretty wild. So they are fully funded by the Russian government. It was uh, They came over here. They set up families. They bought houses. Their entire intention was to integrate into American life and become in policy and decision, decision maker positions. Yeah. These guys have been in deep cover for more than 20 years. Yeah. And it even included, I, I love 
the article goes into um, some of the uh, quotes and things like that, and it included a few really key quotes that were were pretty great, including like some really spy versus spy type secret Excuse communications. Me, but and stuff. haven't we met in California last summer? You're right. <laughs> no, I think it was the Hamptons. And then secret handshake. <laughs> yeah, they have a, yeah, they like trade money or the passport or whatever it was. Yeah. I mean, like in Grand Central Station in public, like you, what you would see in the movies, this is real stuff going on. There's also this whole communication thread that uh, one of the operative groups had with High Command about wanting to buy a house. Pretty interesting. Yeah. And the High Command didn't want them to move to different houses because they thought the house they had had some sort of value in the neighborhood they were in. And really kind of wild to see how that. Their whole point, the intention isn't really to be spies and report back on information is as much to get in positions to help push uh, policy decisions that forward the Russian agenda, whatever those might be at any given time. Well, as an American, you do that. Yeah. I mean, theoretically, every vote is a policy-making decision. I know that sounds a little cheesy, but all they had to do was set up citizenship and boom. Well, I think they wanted something a little more substantial. Yeah, probably. But interesting that they were just down here. I mean, you don't you don't think about this kind of stuff happening with Russia anymore, right? No. That's why I was making jokes earlier. Right. It's Did you pretty, catch the jokes? Those I, were jokes. They were great jokes. Thanks. I, I loved the face out of them. You didn't catch them. I didn't. What was the joke? No, it's too late. Now. Oh, okay. Well, I'll watch it in reruns, and I'm face sure I'll... Face is the joke. <laughs> nice. Thanks. <Boom. laughs> so now these guys have gotten busted, and it's... Oh, oh. Go to the article. Go to the article out there because I'm there. some of I'm telling the people that are watching oh, okay. because if you just want an interest, it reads like a novel. It's just fantastic. It does. And it, it it's like those old spy movies, like like the old, old ones, like yes. with Cagney and Lacey. And yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. Or a good novel, like a, just a book that you would Well, all right, I won't go on, on too much more about it, but I'm really excited that this just totally was not off of our, our and it's normal real. Area. You know, I, I expected when I saw the the headline, the ten alleged Russian secret agents right. arrested. I thought and then they were all cleared of charges. Right, no, no. I thought that was going to be the ending of the no, story. No, they were watching them for a little while, it looks like. So, hmm, pretty interesting. All right, everyone. Well, that wraps up this episode of Jupiter at Night. We will be back um, probably, maybe, we might have a few episodes this week doing some more testing. Because mm-hmm. we're getting closer and closer to the actual real live release of Jupiter at Night every single night, Monday through Thursday. So like we said earlier at the top of the show, if you're interested in catching the show, go subscribe over at the RSS feeds. You can find that at jupiterbroadcasting.com on the right-hand side of the page. Mm -hmm. And is there anything else we have? Yeah, go check out Jupiter Colony. Not only can you comment on our stories and our back episodes there, but there's also a story, uh, an article that Chris put together on how to become part of the crowdsourcing thing that we're doing. For for collecting our news. Yep. Yeah. So, like, for articles that we share on this show, if you see it in our feed during the day, you can have a, a comment included potentially in yep. the show. Yep. Also, the more comments we get on any particular article, the more likely we are to share it on the show. So, yeah. if you like a story, let us know. Yep. And there's also a, a section in that Jupiter Colony form for feedback, suggestions, all kinds of ideas you might have for Jupiter Night, and we'd love to hear those, too. Mm-hmm. Okay, everyone. Well, until tomorrow night, thanks for watching Jupiter Night.